This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about some Jacques Becker movies, RJ. Who? You know Jacques Becker. Oh, yeah. He, what, did, uh, what did he do that ruled? Was it? Let's throw. Let's throw. Yeah, that movie. I, I didn't realize that until afterwards. And I, was like, I, know, oh, I, I, I figured you didn't, know, you didn't know that last week when I told you that wow. we were watching Casque Dour and Toussaint Pao uh, well, Grisby. It was old, just right um, off the tongue. Right off the tongue. Jacques Becker. Yeah. So, yeah, he's back in pod form. And what do we got here, RJ? We got some, I don't know. some movies about slapping. Because, I mean, there's one thing oh, that you can't yes. miss while watching these movies is everyone, men, women, particularly women, but a lot no of, one is safe. No one is safe from getting slapped. But first there are off, so many slaps. So yeah. many, so many. Uh, 1952's Cask Door by Mr. Becker. This movie's got a tagline, RJ. What kind? Of, it does? The Story of a Blonde. That's the tagline. Uh, In the synopsis, ex-convict Georges Manda returns to the free world determined to go straight and takes a steady job as a carpenter. Unable to completely shake his connection with the underground, he meets with a former prison mate, older gangster Felix Lecca, who introduces him to his mistress, the sweet but guarded Marie Cascador. Marie and George fall into a passionate relationship, driving Felix to do everything in his power to ruin the couple. Uh, that sounds serious. Indeed it does. Does that seem like it fits this movie? I, I think the tagline is better. It's, it's way more to the point. Yeah. So this movie opens up. <laughs> uh, what's that movie called? Uh, Day, Day in the Country? It's the um, yeah. What about it? It's about people out on boats riding down the river, and you're like, okay, what's what's this all about? <laughs> so they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're, but it's like you get some some domestic kind of uh, tension going on between this lout and his girl. Everybody comes mm-hmm. up. Uh, you, this is what you used to do. Apparently, um, you, you rode down the river and you went along the. Uh, along the beach, and then you walked up into a cafe, and you hung out, listened to some music. Olden times. You ever done that, RJ? You ever go down the the river? I'm doing it right now. Really? That's very. That's all I it's do. Very, very good internet connection you've got there. Uh, yeah. It seems like some there might be something weird going on. Well, I mean, you should get off the river. Oh, uh, is that not where I'm supposed to be podcasting? Uh, it's not recommended. So, the, the crew shows up. The, this, mm-hmm. this, this, this free loving people, and they're there for a good time on a weekend. Maybe they've left their jobs, for, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And then um, googly eyes are being made amongst these uh, friends. Uh, this large group of people uh, were introduced to uh, our our man Manda, the man with the mustache. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, aforementioned blonde Marie, she's dancing with her um, kind of a rough around the edges lout. What's his name? Is it Raymond? It could be Raymond. It could. It be. could also be something else. Perhaps. I <laughs> know uh, Raymond sounds somewhat. Well, I know there's 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 a Raymond, and then there's the boss in this movie. The boss, like a big boss, or just a no. normal boss? No. Okay, normal boss. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Then there's Roland is the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roland is the boss. Ray, Raymond is his friend. Okay. Or oh, sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> Jared, did you even watch this? Movie? I, I did, but I'm like trying. They're, they're, these guys' names. There's Raymond and Roland, but. Then there's yeah, there, yeah, these dudes have different names. The yeah. names don't matter as much. Yeah. Just tell me what they did. Right? Okay, so tell me what, what there, you're doing for me. There's yeah, so there's like the there's the underling that's dating her, but then she's also seeing the boss, or the boss has a thing for her, right? Lekka. 
Lekka's the boss. Aha. And Raymond's his friend. Okay. And Roll, yeah. Roland is the underling. So, okay. uh, there's an exchange. Roland gets knocked the fuck out. Did you watch this movie, RJ? Yeah, I, I watched this movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, Roland gets, well, it's because his girlfriend wants to go for a dance. And then uh, Roland gets all pissed. He says, "Hey, I don't. I'm not dating no loose floozy." If, uh, and then everyone says, "If this, well, Relax. he's yeah, he's he's uh, got a short temper, and he does not. Yeah. Like, I mean, would you notice if you're dancing with your girl and she just kept staring at this guy the entire time for like a minute straight? Would you be like oblivious? I don't dance. Okay. Nice, so. nice dodge. Um, so anyway, they th- there's a throwdown, but now, but her interest has been piqued. By this carpenter mm-hmm. th- th- that uh, apparently is quite dashing, uh, allegedly, it seems, in this movie. He's, uh, he has a distinct look. So these both these movies kind of have like a similar way of like handling the before time, <laughs> before mm-hmm. the movie starts, where it's like, oh, yeah, he just got, he's got out of jail. But they don't make a deal about that. It's not like lingered upon. There's no big thing. There's no flashbacks to like what happened beforehand. It's kind, of, mm-hmm. it's kind of refreshing from watching a lot of television that, like, belabors the past and really hones in on it. And you're, like, teased out, like, what actually happened back then? It's just kind of like, yeah, that happened. We're what, good now. What did actually happen back then? I don't know. What's the real story? <laughs> exactly. Who cares? What's the secret origin, Jarrett? Mm-hmm. We don't need that. We don't need, move like, that in movies about for adults. Oh, is that what we do on this thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting indeed. So anyway, um jealousy abounds. There's a lot of uh, character interaction back and forth like movies do where it's like mm-hmm. she comes on strong, he doesn't want it, but does he want it? Maybe he does want her and now she's offended. And it all has to be kind of kept under wraps. But then there's a little bit of mm, death. Is it interesting? Is um, it intriguing? Yeah, while there's some uh, stabbing. Me- there's there's stabbing and there's also grabbing. You know what well, I'm that's about. no, that's that's primarily in the next movie. This one has this one also has one. Does it? Does it have? I a... made a note of it. Okay, I I only really so I only a theme. I, I, okay that's the theme. okay that's a theme. I I really noticed it in uh, yep. uh, Grisby. <laughs> But uh, so both of these movies, this movie is more slap the film, but it does have some some grabs in it as well. They're, right. So this Jacques Becker dude was really in a grab and some tit. Let me tell you. Mm. He's I mean, he's giving French audiences what they demanded. Allegedly, it's like he was from Italy, it seems. Mm-hmm. Well, then the, the, yeah. the, the, the next movie is a French Italian production. Whew, what do you think they're getting into in there? Mm-hmm. In that? I don't know. So. Uh, there's now a man on the run. Man on the run. Uh, yeah, because the 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 abusive guy Roland, he's dead, and there's the police don't know who did it. It was a scrap throwdown. But um, Leka, he's like, I don't like how uh, Marie and George are uh, not here anymore. They've obviously absconded. So he's like, I'm gonna lure him back. We're gonna frame Raymond, <laughs> George's good friend, for this murder. Draw him back into town. It's kind of like heat, <laughs> or like out of yeah, against his uh, his best uh, interest. He's like, oh, I gotta go back. Gotta be a good man. And he's like, Well, I'm gonna come, and then I'll be arrested, and then uh, Roland will be freed. Well, allegedly, the the police just charge uh, charge them both. Mm-hmm. That that's a real shitty deal, and yep. um, Lekka makes his move on uh, the, the cask door. What kind of move is it? Is it uh, sen- sexual or is it consensual? Uh, why would those be mutually exclusive? Sexual and consensual, RJ. We're talking about a uh, French film here, Jared. I, I see. So, you know I mean? um, yeah, it is not consensual. I think. Well, it's see, mo- that's why you have to ask. Yeah, there's a jailbreak. Yep. And, uh, and then what happens? Well, eventually, old uh, George he comes to uh, 
finish Lekka off. And of course, uh, Lekka is in a, is he in a jail cell? Right. Or he's like at the, at the, like at the end end. Not, well, the, not the end end. Well, it'd be the five minutes before the end end. Yes. Yeah. He like, well, he jumps out the window. It's like the courtyard of the police station, but it's, because it's like through a window, but there's also a door. Oh yeah, he, he sorry, he chases him through, and then Lekka goes into the, he goes to hide in the police station, thinking he'll be safe. Yeah, and that's yeah. not and, and but uh, fucking. Well, but the police hang up their pistols on the uh, the coat hanger there, and uh, <laughs> it's not it's not op it's not the best. It was practice. it was a, it was a different time in this, yeah, like period piece, because this is a period piece. Uh, even though it's like in the background, you see like all the bombed out World War II buildings, right? Mm-hmm. Buildings because of World War II. But, you know, that's what happens when you shoot on location. Um, Post World War II, I guess, in Europe, you just get these buildings that have been shelled and they're just still there. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, you keep thinking like, well, is George going to do it? And fuck yeah, he does. George just fucking guns this guy down, <laughs> dead. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, we get we get a transition <laughs> to uh, a straight up guillotine execution by the state. It is just unpunctuated. <laughs> like I don't know how to put that exactly, but straight to the point, brutal, vicious, and thin. And it's all over with the crime, but maybe not for uh, um, our protagonist protagonist at Marie. I liked. I liked the uh, the hotel room that seems to exclusively rent out to people that are interested in watching executions. Yep. So yeah, here's our room. You see that good dude's head get Look, cut looking off. Over the car- want, looking over the courtyard. Yep. What's the movie we just watched not that long ago that had like uh, the also the very, fairly brutal uh, uh, beheading execution? Oh uh, shit! Was it um, chasing Amy? <laughs> Uh, that movie was a while ago, RJ. God, pay attention. Uh, yeah, shit. I can't remember now. I'll, I'll look on my list here, see if I can, if I can find it. It wasn't one of the Cassavetti's movies. I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, yeah, that movie. That movie's um, just got Peter Falk's hat. There's fuck. What was that? There was a movie, Jared, that we watched one time. This one time. Was it a German film? Perhaps. I mean, coup de gras ends with uh, executions. Was it uh, Battle of Algiers? Uh, Battle of Algiers ends with, or I yeah, think has executions I'm, I'm in it. Pr- that, that, which was right before Cassavetes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Salvatore Battle of... Giuliani. Uh, it was Battle, Battle, of it was Battle of Algiers. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, very uh, reminiscent of that, I guess. But but this movie came before. Do you think that they uh, ripped it off? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying Battle of Algiers might have ripped it off. Yeah. Like the historical yeah, yeah. documents? Yes, just like that. No, the, the, that's like yeah. one of the, I think the real highlight of this movie is actually the ending. Oh, yeah. Because that is other than that, highlight. this movie reminds me of Rene Claire movies for the most part. Like oh. this, this movie feels like 20 years older than it is. Or sorry, yeah, 20 years older than it is. This feels like something from the 30s. Because I'm kind of like, wait, like I don't know. It doesn't feel as contemporary particularly as uh uh touches pa um then the, yeah. the, the other second movie um uh, as usually happens with these double headers one is greater than the other uh and you and usually it's the first it's one we watch and then the second yeah. one's kind of like uh, a bit more of a chore to get through this one the, the formula has been flipped and i feel that I this know. is the, the definitely the weaker it's just movies like it's adequate it's okay but i i don't know i i definitely did uh doze off uh i rested my eyes i'm sorry to use a rj's expression i rested my eyes i I feel like for uh like maybe a half hour in the middle of this movie yeah Yeah. and some people say that you can't rest your eyes and continue to watch a subtitled film but but clearly uh... how eloquently I walked mm-hmm. through the plot of this movie and recalling all the Clearly details and characters. I mean, I was there all yep. along. Well, I, I did not rest my eyes during this film. And uh, as you know, I don't, the names of characters leave me as soon as the movie is over. And I never think of them again. Uh, I think Oliver Granger asked me a question about Tanner 88 yesterday. And I was like, 
was like, you're asking the wrong fucking guy, dude. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you, you should ask someone that... who does a Criterion podcast. That's not me. Well, well, you, you've known the episode. It's like, it's gone. It's out of my mind forever. Hmm. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that where, um, this is a good, uh, rest your eyes kind of film. Look at the ceiling <laughs> a little bit. Uh, well, the ending is great. And I think that's why that's probably the justification of why it's here is it's like the ending. It's like, you didn't see that coming. And you're like, all right, but the whole build up to it, it is very, um, Jared, I'm going to use a Jared word. It, I'm going to say pedestrian. It's very pedestrian. This film, you say that all the time. Do Jared's always saying that. Hmm. Yeah, you do just all the time. No, uh, it's just very, uh, it's, it's, I would describe it as like a Sarah plain and tall thing where it's just like, nothing really happens you know it's just there there's nothing bad about it but at the same time you're like you wouldn't you wouldn't give it two bucks because we got this dude he's got a mustache he likes a girl he gets into a little fight he punches a guy out girl likes him girl's connected to the mob uh of some sort uh and then guy tries to get girl they have a knife fight Jarrett. there is a knife fight uh which i in that part too actually i was um uh, so you brought up the stabbings, but uh, I was uh, I was actually a little surprised by that. I was like, oh, they're actually just full on stabbing people here. Oh, <laughs> what was that movie we just watched? The uh, the Duelist movie, because that movie had a uh, lots oh. of. Oh, um, you know, is that the movie you were thinking or, of? No, no, that's Scaramouche. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no, Scaramouche. Th- this actually. So this reminds me. I don't know if you remember the um, the Rene Claire movie. Uh, like uh, there was a new La Liberté. That's like that. Oh, it's. One exactly, I know. But then there's also Under the Roofs of Paris. Oh, I remember that one. Well, because remember, like, there's like a, I mean, it has that, it, it felt like those movies. It felt like something from, yeah, like, the it's, early, it's it, it felt like, it felt like the early 30s, uh, rather yeah. than 1952, where you could have a little bit more uh, edge, I guess, to your stories. Remember mm-hmm. Le Million? <laughs> Oh, I know. But, but, but I mean, but that that's like a that's a like that's a whatever proto silent musical kind of thing. Like it's so removed from yeah. what what this movie could have been. But yeah, it just like felt very uh yeah there. Yep. Well, yeah, and so yeah, yeah, a night fight, and that's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's this build up of a uh, hunting men down, which is also. It sounds better than it is. So mm-hmm. this guy goes on his vendetta to take out men. And it's like, that sounds cool. But it, but all you really see is just this dude with a mustache out in the, out in the country drinking a cup of coffee. And you're like, <laughs> all right. All right. And then you're like, the mob boss guy is just like, it was my elaborate plan to seduce this woman myself. And then you're just like, all right. Is that Zap Brannigan? might have been i'm not gonna repeat it uh but yeah like the the first like bit of this you're kind of just like okay yeah i got it i'm good the, uh, the end is good the ending is really good but the uh, ending it, is very good it's because because uh yeah well i think uh there's a true foe some film critic types they kind of mentioned just like how well done the end of this is yeah, yeah, there it is. Truffaut yeah. praised this scene, writing, If you're at all interested in how stories are constructed, you cannot fail to admire the ingenuity of the plot, particularly the strong, oblique, unexpected way it gets abruptly to Amanda's execution in a scene that is so beautiful as it is mysterious, as the cast door arrives in the middle of the night at a disreputable hotel. When I or any of my fellow uh, scenerists are in trouble, we often say to each other, How about a cask door solution? I, I mean, I think we should end this epi- end some of our episodes in a cask door situation. <laughs> oh, that's or good. the podcast in general. Mayhap. So one, one thing I'm noticing, uh, looking at this list of movies we've watched in the last hundred or so, these movies, posters with like women with like puffy dresses at the top, the roughly yeah. dresses like Alina and her men, <laughs> cask door, golden coach. Eh, it's not roughly at the top. Maybe that's a bad sign. Maybe that's a uh, that's got go away uh, heat for me now. Well, there's a few like that, and like I mean, I'm honestly, but I said I 
when I watched it, I, I was like, yeah, I was like, this is good. The ending's great. The first uh, first bit, I was kind of like, whatever. But uh, in comparison to the the second one, they kind of lowered my uh, opinion of this one. Uh, and then the last thing is the, for you and me, this character named by Manda, it really kind of uh, reminded me of Mando. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And not to sound like a total chud, but uh, Chudinsky. Yeah, but it uh, it was in my mind at the time. But no, I I don't. I think Cask Doors, it's I, for sure. I think the ending's great. I think the first little bit is whatever. But uh, com- when you watch it as a double header, you definitely the second one, which is like you said, not the norm. The second one leaves way more of an impact on you, I think, than this mm. one does. It did for me at least. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess we could just go ahead and talk about the second movie. Touche pa au Grisby. That's Touché. right, RJ. So what what does uh, Touche pa au Grisby stand for, RJ? What does it translate to in uh, uh, the Queen's English? If I remember my grade six French chair, I, I believe it is honor amongst thieves. Oh, really? Because I don't think that's actually what it translates to. But that is the British title. Is that, that What does it translate to then? Uh, I think it's like hands off the loot or something like that. Oh, I believe it was one of the many like weird, yeah. Don't touch the loot. Hands off the mm-hmm. loot. Uh, Honor among thieves is the British title. I think in a, at one point, maybe in America or somewhere, it was called Gri- it was called Grisby. Grisby, which I thought was the name, but it's Mac. Like, I'm like, is this about a guy named Grisby? It's like no, it's about a guy named Max. But yeah, um, oh. but yeah, it's hands off the loot. I like uh, I like Touche Pa more. And this is 1954. Even in English, they should have just called it Touche Pa. The tagline for this uh-huh. film, RJ, it bristles with violence. Did it? <laughs> it's got a man getting blown up by a grenade. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, that is good stuff. I do like that. Gentleman gangster Max and his partner Riton pull off their last, most successful heist and find themselves comfortable enough to retire and in the style they enjoy. However, hmm. Max confides the details of the theft to his younger mistress, Josie, who has secretly taken up with ambitious young rival gangster Angelo. Angelo then has Raton kidnapped and demands the stash of gold as ransom, which threatens Max's dreams of the perfect retirement. Damn. So, RJ, it's, so close. it's a story as old as time. Is it? One last heist. Oh, I see. And then a guy talks to his girl, and the girl, she's she likes the younger guy, tells him about it, and then they kidnap your best friend, and now you got to do the right thing, and you have to fuck some people up. What is the right <laughs> thing in your mind? <laughs> Kill them in a ram machine gun fire. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, I this is this so this one is uh, not available on the Criterion Channel, which is like, of course, it's bad. Uh, Kino Lorber put this out, I believe, on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So we we tracked it down for you, the fans, and uh, I went into this movie not knowing anything about it, except that I had mm-hmm. actually at one point put it on a film noir watch list uh, a couple years ago, knowing nothing about it. But what kind of had slowed my role on wanting to watch this was that, as actually its leading man, old uh, Jean Gabin. <laughs> uh, because of uh, Grand Illusion fame or what? Grand Illusion fame, Port of Shadows fame, Le Bet Humaine fame, Pepe Lamoco fame, French what? Can Can fame, Lower Depths fame. What's the alternative title to Pepe Lomoco? Uh, I can't recall. Oh, okay. Someone someone listening can probably find that for us. So yeah. Jean Gabin, is, I don't know. He's a movie star. I recognize this guy. But I, I, I've, I've never felt it. I've never been wowed by this guy. Even, um, man, is there anything that like I'm in total love with with this? He's kind of like French Kenneth Branagh, Jarrett. That's what someone keeps saying. Yeah. If you don't see it, look again. Mm-hmm. So wait, you're saying, is there anything that you, uh, maybe Touche Pa, it will be your new, uh, 
your go to well, for the Jean Gaiman fans. Not, not to get too far. I, I mean, I did like Port of Shadows, but I I, I yeah, didn't. Yeah, Port of Shadows is pretty good. Yeah, that one's pretty. That's actually one of the I think one of the better of, of his. It is definitely his other best offering. But man, t- uh, t- touche pas. It really, it really got me, RJ. It got me going because this movie just like it opens up so effortlessly, and it's just like these two buddies out on the town with their girls just doing stuff in Paris oh, yeah. or like in a borough of Paris or whatever that is. And mm-hmm. it's, it's really good. It's like really engaging. And mm-hmm. I was like, huh? Like, I don't know what it is. Like, this seems like contemporary. This feels like exactly how uh, a gangster movie would be done today. And I feel like for what 1954, this feels really ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have like the trappings. The dialogue is very naturalistic. And yeah. there's no, it doesn't feel like you're watching um, stereotypes. It feels like these guys mm-hmm. who uh, maybe they've left behind that life. And Jean Gabin is like the aged Max as the old kind of, like he is, yeah. so, he is so good, I think. Um, he feels like he's really relaxed with himself and he's a guy who just wants to go back home, go to bed. He he doesn't he doesn't need to to wait around with the showgirl uh, until she's done her show at two in the morning and can keep the party going. He's like ah, no, nah, I'm good. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll see you later. <laughs> don't worry. I, I don't need I to think... sleep at your place. I'm I'm I just want to get cozy. I want I want some cookies. Maybe have some tea. Yep. Just go right to bed. Mm-hmm. Tuck in early. I think my favorite scene of showing his old man is where he uh, he uh, lights a dart. He pops open a beer, puts a record on, sits down in his chair, and then it's it's so fast. It's like a it's not even a five second scene, but he sits down and you just see on his face he's just tired and he just and he's just he's you can tell he's like I just want to sit in this chair for a while, but then the phone rings and he's like <laughs> he peels himself out of the chair. But I I really like that scene because it's like you know you've been there, Jared. You sit down to do something and then your phone rings and you're just like. It's the worst. Yeah, because it's you're well, like I don't want this. And in 1954, you don't have caller ID. You, you have to you have to answer the phone. Some people don't have it now, or else. Scary, sad, terrifying, sad. Yeah, what were we talking about? Touche pas au grisby. Oh, touche pas au grisby. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, he's old, and I like it. Yeah, like you said, he he embodies the character. Yeah, how do you like that? Uh, that's a big word. It's not the one I would use. No, pedestrian. Uh, pedestrian is probably uh, what I would use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, you, you don't know that if it feels very directionless at the beginning. It's just these characters kind of bouncing around uh, in an evening, having uh, at a cafe that's closing down for the night, and they like kind of close the shutters so more people can't come in. But a young a young man comes bustling in that uh. Max has become particularly fond of and sees him as the future. And there's kind of these like little illusions, um, little like, oh yeah, we we had we had we had like a big uh, we had a big hit on that, didn't we? So basically, there was a heist, and yeah. kind of like in the previous movie, the past isn't directly referenced, but it is because they're talking like everything is because of the amount of money they have, and you get a description of like, oh yeah, we got away with it, and we have the money, and I keep it in this car in the garage. Uh, until until uh, our, our our gold ingots ingots, ugnuts uh, Ugn- ugnuts ugnuts yeah <laughs> yeah do they, do they do they what do they fix whatever you need buddy okay whatever you need so uh, yeah so Max Raton they're going to uh, take it easy yeah you, you don't want to play your hand too soon you just want to mm-hmm. you just want to be cool just be cool. But so eventually they, they go on, they go on a little car ride. They catch a cab. Uh, they're like, he's uh, Max is all ready to go home, but he's kind of convinced to keep this keep this party going. Mm-hmm. And um, they show up. There's a lot of like oogling of ladies in this RJ. Lots of what, like, what else is there? Wow, I mean, well, I'm speak at this point in the film, just like a lot of like just checking out, looking at you know gams, looking at breasts checking out yes. yeah butt pinching by uh stage hands then there's just full on like breast handling 
There's uh, a few scenes un- of Brett's handling. Unwanted, but it's like in a teasy, oh, stop. Don't come up behind me and just grab my breast when I'm taking you to see the the, the boss. Come on. And you need a hand carrying all that? Mm-hmm. S- says the subtitle. Yeah. And then there's there's also, as you said, the butt pinching, whereas that that uh, sound guy keeps grabbing my ass, mm-hmm. keeps pinching my butt, and it's like, He's grabbing your butt? I thought he was grabbing my butt. And then everyone laughs. <laughs> they go, oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right. Sexual harassment. Uh, the 50s. Yeah. yeah. It, was, yeah. it was wild stuff, buddy. No. Yeah. So uh, there's a – so this is like when the the success of the heist gets discussed with Fats, I mm-hmm. believe, is uh, the name of the the boss who runs the nightclub, Perro. Uh, Perot, yeah, yeah, fats, yeah. I like Perot, yeah. And you know they're having a chat about the future, about when when to you know make money available, how to pace things and uh, stay under the radar. That kind of conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course Max goes backstage because he's they got to bring the girls back because they're um they're dancers, performers at this club. And while back there, he sees that one of the girls, R- Raton's girl, she's just making out with this Angelo guy, and he's kind of like you know, this this other this other chap, and he's just like, oh well, and she's like, oh no, you have to you have to break things up with me and Raton, you have to go do it. And he's like, I'm not doing that. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm not, none of my business. I didn't see anything, but he's done with her too, mm-hmm. and so he takes off, and he's like, I've had enough of this for one night. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna get some sleep. <laughs> well, he he's just like, he was already going home. He's like, I'll just go say bye to the mm. girls. No. I'll make my way home. And then he's like, ah. but then what what happens on the ride home, RJ? Well, Jared, there's something that interesting happens on the ride home, which actually, and here's another thing that I really like about this film. And I'm saying film, Jared. One thing I really like is I like the car scenes. They get the lighting and the shadows. Oh yeah, which I think is really good. It, there's like a, a nice attention to the detail there. And then one other thing I liked a lot because it's, it's like that screen that moves behind. Right. But when it shows like the front view of the car and they have the rear view mirror, they like imposed in a little square, the back back view of what's going on there too. But it's all like, it's all projected. Right. And yeah. I liked it. I was like, damn, it's good attention to detail. Maybe you should watch more, uh, Film noir, RJ, you'll get lots no. of that. Lots of rear projection. No, de- I don't want to de- do that. details and lighting. No, I don't want to do that. But uh, he's getting tailed. My yep. Man. Yeah, he's being, they're be- him and his cab, they're being uh, tailed by an ambulance. Yeah, and it's like, an ambulance? Strange. <laughs> That's right. So he knows he's being tailed. He gets dropped off, makes sure he pays that cab driver, tells him to get the hell out of here. He goes into his uh, his place, gets up the stairs, and then he sees that ambulance pull up, and he keeps he goes and gets his gun, mm-hmm. and he gets the drop on these two people wearing uh, like lab coats. <laughs> um, uh, they're they're trying to be ambulance am- drivers, ambulance people, and ambulance. he's like, oh, <laughs> it's like hello, uh, with and a gun in their face. Max, we're not here for you. Yeah. <laughs> We're not here for you. He goes, who are you here for? Fucking marry the housemaid? He's like, get the hell out of here. Yeah. And then he takes off. Yeah. And I like his move, though. He kind of mm-hmm. mocks him in the elevator a little bit. Yeah. Right? And then he absconds, hops out a window. Or no, sorry. Uh, he's not out the window. He goes down the back stairs. He, he fires off some shots, and then he goes out the back stairs. Yeah. Yes. Because the – just so that someone in the building would call the police – yeah, is the idea, and uh, so now he's like, "Oh boy, here we go. Better go, better go find uh, Raton. Let him know what's going on. I think there's some some happenings afoot. Something's afoot for sure. Mm-hmm. Something. So uh, they, well, so Max makes a phone call, mm-hmm. and uh, warns Raton. About like, hey, these guys in an ambulance just showed up, and Raton is uh, already kind of in a room with two other galoots. Like these men are just like massive Enormous. chest, huge shoulders in these suits. He's like, oh, sorry, I can't come with you. Something with the family came up, and they're kind of looking at each other like, oh, 
but we have to like I'm like, why don't you just grab him and like make him come with you? But this is like a more polite civilization. Um and yeah. they're like, Well, I guess we'll get you next time. Well, he does have a gun though. And he like he makes it very clear, he shows them, Yeah, here's my gun. Mm-hmm. All right, I gotta go. Yeah. But I mean look look at the size of these men. That they could probably those bullets would bounce off of those muscles. It's- that's how goons. that. I think that's how it works with goons, hired goons, goons? hired goons, hired goons. Did, Marge, did you order any hired goons? Oh, there yes. you go. Yes. So we're on the same page. Um, Max fetches Ratom. They go to yep. Max's secret apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you, this is where the the, the bond and the friendship of uh, Max and Raton really starts to come through. Up to this point, you're just like, these are just guys that kind of know each other. Like some real Cassavetes guys. Oh, yes. Things can turn yep. on a dime. They're not, not, not like real, like, you know, honor amongst thieves, RJ. Honor amongst Oh, of which we're told that there is none, typically. There, but is there? Except for these two. Except for these two. And in uh, this apartment, you get my uh, two favorite scenes in this film. Yeah, uh, I wrote just two dudes eating pate. Yep, which I liked a lot. That's li- that's living the good life. Living the good life. They're just two dudes eating pate, and I was like, I like it. And then my next note, just two dudes brushing their teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know what? We need more movies of scenes of dudes brushing their teeth. Well, where because... else are where all else are people going to learn how to brush their teeth if not the movies? It's just, it's those fine details, Jared, where it's just like, mm-hmm. you know what? Men do need to brush their teeth, too. It's yeah. not all about the the bang-bang gangster stuff, Jared. You got you to gotta have proper uh, dental hygiene as well. Bang-bang. So, um, bang, bang. so, Max takes off the next morning, and uh, he's going to fence the gold. It's because he yeah. finds out from Raton. Raton told the girl Josie about it, and it's like, why are you, why are you talking to these skirts? Why are you telling them this stuff? They're just gonna run, and then they'll look what happened. So, um, that he's gonna he's he's gonna get fleeced by because fences fleece. They always, and I think it's his uncle as well. Uh, it's alluded to, I think. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, this yeah. guy's this guy's gonna rip off his own family. I mean, whatever happened to honor amongst thieves? Well, Jared, have you do you know what uh, touche pa stands for? <laughs> Uh, don't Do you, touch the loot. Don't touch the loot. Don't touch the loot. If you ever went against me, Jarrett, I would, uh, I'd have you down in uh, five minutes flat. Not like physically, but I mean, I would have so much stuff stacked against you that you would be, you'd be in prison forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so Max fa- makes, Max makes a phone call. Mm-hmm. Um, and, be- and then, uh, to, I think it's to Josie. And she yep. she mentions that oh Raton was just here and now he's being taken away in an ambulance. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, that dude's here, but some my, reason my, an my, my, my boyfriend, my boyfriend, my 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 sugar daddy showed up, and now now the ambulance drivers from these guys that look vaguely familiar, they're taking him away. You're like, oh weird, yeah, that's weird. I right. don't know what that's about. No. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, uh, so Max, he's got a man. Now he's got to like save him. <laughs> so, so he's got to get a, a little posse together. Uh, he gets the gang together for sure. Yeah, well, he gets Marco. Gets he gets the young. He gets the young guy. The young from buck. From, from the night before. Because yeah, this movie takes place over like what, like two days, two three days. days. Yeah, real quick stuff. Uh, yeah. they go to Josie. They pay her a visit. And mm-hmm. because this is a Jacques Becker movie, what happens, RJ? Uh, with Josie? Yeah. The you, you're talking about the cook lady, right? I'm talking the, the, the the dancer girl. Oh, Jared, some serious stuff happens. I don't know if I want to say for the listeners. Does she get slapped? Jared, I don't know if you watch these movies, but every five minutes, one character, some character is getting slapped. Someone's getting, get, someone's being like threatened. Someone's being yeah. smartened up. Someone's I, I being did, corrected. I did like how he pulled like the, uh, the housekeeper. in. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be here too. You're going to watch this. And he's slapping that guy too. He's like, I know you saw some shit. 
uh, yeah, every five minutes, someone's either getting slapped or a tit is getting grabbed. So, uh, mm-hmm. French. What are you going to do? The French. So, um, they head over to uh, Perot, Fats's, uh, mm-hmm. interrogate the other girl, <laughs> uh, Fifi. Uh, yep. Yep. Guess what happens, RJ? Slaps. Is there any slaps involved? Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, right. And then eventually, yeah. So Angelo makes a phone call, proposes, hey, you, we got Raton. You got some gold. We don't, Raton's not worth anything to us. So now the mm-hmm. the three of them, the, the boys, Max, Marco, and Perot, they arm, they, they, yeah, they get armed up. They get that gold and they head out. Uh, and they are going to make an exchange. Ooh, what kind of exchange? Gold uh, for the man? The, or? Gold, gold for the man. Gold for the man. And, uh, I mean, in the back of their mind, they kind of know, I don't know if this is going to go down the way that we want it to. Um, and the guns are held on one another. Uh, people are, the, the exchange happens. Everything's everything's tippy top. But uh, then I believe Raton mentions it's like, there's two cars. Uh-huh. And then and then a second car does start coming up that road. After everything seemed like it was good and in the clear. And uh, so there's some grenading and gunfire and hiding stick in ditches, grenades, stick grenades. And uh, poor Marco, he gets got. The young man, his life is snatched away from him. Very sad. The The car comes back for a second pass. And... They in get uh, to to make sure they finish the job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I see what you mean. Yeah, and then they, but then uh, they've got their guns. They take them out, and then the pursuit happens, and it's just like, whoa, where did all this come from? And this like proceeding half of the, like the whole chunk of this movie is just like this slow broil, uh, not a char broil, RJ, but it's just oh. br- br- slow boil. Um, and, okay. and then suddenly it's all, it's all action and like grim and gritty and people just getting shot up, mowed down, gunfire, mm-hmm. run off roads, very explosive stuff. Do, uh, do any of our protagonists, uh, get, uh, taken out in the process? Well, Marcos got, got, gets grenaded. Marco gets grenaded. And then, uh, what about, uh, Breton? Breton, well, he gets hit. By a bullet, mm-hmm. um, he seems fine at the time, but they, they do, uh, they do, yeah. they do uh, throw. I guess I said earlier, they grenade a man, well, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like, like a lot of dirt comes flying up from behind the car, and they don't cut away. It's not like it's not like some like Mandalorian show that's always cutting away from the the good stuff. They, uh, oh, you know, they full on. They just like, oh yeah, there, 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 there goes that guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've uh, they lose the money because it was in the car that's on fire, and um, they they take off because there's a another vehicle approaching. Mm-hmm. They try to patch up Raton, kind of like a, I guess like a crime doctor. You know, crime doctors. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, he's probably a vet, right? Because mm-hmm. it's always a vet. It's never a real doctor. It's like, it's like I only work on cows, but I'll try to patch them up the best I can. Yeah. So I, at this point, they're like, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. You you uh, you, you hang in there, Raton. Max goes off for some lunch back at the uh, that nice cafe from earlier. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they start making plots, plans about how to get that money still. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean, he gets some bad news. Mm-hmm. But he's just like, you know what? I got a safe face. No one can know. I got to stick it out. Puts a, puts a dime in the jukebox, Jarrett, and uh, he rides it out. Which I didn't mention, the jukebox is a big scene, uh, mm-hmm. or a big character. And in uh Start of the movie, we got that Ava Marie playing, and you go, "God damn, God damn, this is a serious film, very serious, serious film." So yeah, uh, this movie was a quite a surprise. Yeah, it's good. That's like it's a good one, RJ. It feels like good they've show. been far and few between of late. Uh, yeah, there's been some stinkers. It's like season five of DS9. There's been uh, a lot of pants, <laughs> as Jarrett would say, pants. 
Hands. Uh, this isn't Hands, the film, but, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. And uh, it's needed in the uh, current uh, bender that we've been on. Been That's been the last two years. That'll never longer than that. Yeah, the last four years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but, yeah, this was good. I, and uh, it's like you said, I – it was unexpected for me, and I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "I like this," and then it kind of uh, wiped my uh, my opinion on Cask Door because mm-hmm. I was just like, "I was like, well, I don't know, man. If I'm gonna watch any uh, Becker, it's either gonna be Ted Danson Becker, or it's gonna be Touche Pa. You know what I mean?" I hear ya. You remember that TV show Becker? I, uh... or no, wait, was that uh, what's his face from the TV Shining? Was that who Becker was? What was who was Becker? What, what about Becker what about what about Pecker? What is Pecker about? Uh, photographer. Not Pecker. Oh no, I was right. Ted Danson is Becker. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Well, for a second, I thought it was that. Is Pecker the dude from? Uh... No. <laughs> Pe- Pecker's Edward Furlong. Oh, not uh, Uncle Peckerhead. That's a different film, right? Uh, yeah, I think so too. Wait, who is in the TV show Sh- The Shining? Steven Weber. That's who I thought mm. it was for a second. Uh, yes. From Wings? Is that what Steven Weber was in? Yep. Okay. With Timothy Dalton. Not Timothy Dalton. Tim Daly. Tony who's, Shalhoub? Who's Superman. Tim Daly's a lot of men. Superman was one of them. Yep. So you like Touche <laughs> Pa Grisby, huh? Yeah, it's good. I thought it was a good show. Good. You want to good you want to hear from some people who hate these two movies? Just the two of them? All right. Yeah, not all of them. There's always a little bit of displeasure. Sure. But this one has less uh, super hatreds, but so first up, we got Cast Door, a two star review from Owl Bunny Bunny Owl Owl Bunny. Uh, the emojis. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Uh, patriarchal, rude, and offensive. Um, owl bunny, bunny, owl, owl, bunny. Uh, their bio is she's like she's she's like scissors, not very sharp in kindergarten. And their five star films include The Matrix and a bunch of shit I've never heard of. Hmm. So how's that for you, Jarrett? Pretty good. Have you heard of Blind Woman's Curse from 1970? Yes. Have you I, heard? I, of, I, I own it. Have you heard of Meshes of the Afternoon from 1943? Yes, I have, RJ. Have you heard of Spore from 2017? Mm, no. Jarrett, have you heard of Vagabond? Yes. Well, it's is it a five star film? It's pretty good. What about Foxcatcher? Is that a five star film? No. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Five stars for bad prosthetics. Yeah, allegedly. What about Mr. Turner, the art film? I have not seen that. Oh, so you can't say if it's five stars or not? I've heard it's good. What about My Dinner with Andre? Is that a five star film? No. No? Not not even in the uh, arcade version. Oh. I like that one. Martin Martin was down with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. Interesting. Their half star films are just stuff. Oh, they give Midsommar one star. That's cool. Uh, Eric Badgert. <laughs> Not a real name, but okay. Badgert. Badgert. I don't know. Two stars. Yeah. It looks great. Becker's camera moves in interesting ways. <laughs> and the final is that- shot is gorgeous. Too bad the main character has the personality of a wet napkin. Sad. <laughs> Sad. Um, hey, guess what? Five stars. Call me by your name. Mm-hmm. They also gave uh, your favorite film, uh, Manchester by the Sea, five stars. Mm-hmm. There, there's some good criterions in here, like Passion of Joan of Arc. Uh, Brief Encounter, five stars. I mean, Brief Encounter is pretty good. Pretty good. Some weird trick or treat five stars. No, thank you. They love uh, loves of a blonde is in their favorite films, which is a little bit weird. 
But they also give half a star to um, Man of Steel and then half a star to The Gift, the Joel Edgerton film. And I don't think uh, The Gift is a half star film, Jerry. I'm going to say it right now. I remember. I think that's at least a three and a half, four star film. At least. As for Grisby. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, Shiitake Harry, which is very close to being Shit Take Harry. (laughs) You know what? Let's just say that that's it. <laughs> All right. So, shit, take Harry. Fourth movie in the Trilon 10th anniversary. Okay. This okay. is an incredibly boring and hateful movie that doesn't really have anything going for it. <laughs> what? I mean, I don't think so. Boring but... and hateful. All these people I'm noticing now, they're, they're all just, they all five-star Miyazaki films. And Seven Samurai, and then Wan Kar Wai films, which is like, those are all good movies, you know. No. But it's it's just the trend, you know. No. This person also gave Portrait of the Lady on five or five stars. Frank Solano, where you at, buddy? Where you at? Um, and finally, let's go with Blake. Okay. Two stars. This reminded me of the Mel. Sorry, this reminded me of Melville's Bob Le Flambe, which I was going to ask you actually, which you preferred between this and Bob Le Flambe? Yeah, uh, probably this one. Okay, Bob Le Flambe is good, but uh, I did like this one. It was good. Well, good Blake it says this reminded him of Melville's Bob Le Flambe, but awful, <laughs> similar to Bob Le Flambe until the final third of the film. There is very little story intention besides making the anti-hero seem like a badass. Unlike Bob Le Flambe, the lead-up to this final act entirely fails to be entertaining and develop lovable characters. This movie is an hour and a half of Jean Gabin slapping people, hell yeah, and treating women like filth. Well, I mean, that's just him being shitty. But this is a shitty world. I don't like it. Doesn't glamorize it like Bob. Yeah. He's so stylish, think... and it's also involving young men being killed. Spoilers. Spoilers. After watching Becker's Le Troll, this was a huge disappointment. Uh, I mean, I don't think that's entirely fair, but this person, it's just Criterion stuff. Five stars. Rebecca, uh, Peeping Tom. I don't think that's a five-star film. Diary of a Country Priest, I also don't think is a five-star film. Sullivan's Travels, not five stars. Mon Uncle, not five stars. I like all those movies, but not five stars, my man. Les Cirque Rouge, five stars. So it's just, is it a Criterion film? I'm going to give it five stars. They only have one one-star movie, or two stars, and it's this one. Really? But they did give Savo two and a half stars. Ooh, it's got the edge. So it's got the edge. Their favorite films include Grand Illusion, The Ascent, Canal, which it was actually on other people's uh, favorites as well from 1957, Canal. And uh, The Fireman's Ball, which is like nobody's favorite film. Pretty sure it'll be. I think if it's the Canal, I'm thinking of, we'll be watching that pretty soon. Canal uh, from Andre Wojda. Wajda. <laughs> yep. Wajda. Yep. Uh, in a little while, we'll be watching those. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the people who didn't like these movies uh, were on board with that. So, okay, whatever that means. That could be uh, something. So, um, any final thoughts on Becker? Uh, I mean, I like Ted Danson in certain things, but I don't like Ted Danson in other things. Does that make sense? No. He's okay in some. He's okay in certain things, but no. other things he's. What do you think about men named Jacques that make movies? I know uh, Jacques Cousteau. Yeah, he makes fish films. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, like uh, like Troy uh, Mickler. Yes. Uh, second movie good. First movie, okay. That's it. That's it. That's my whole movie. <laughs> yep, that's it. Break them open. <laughs> Crack them out. Great take, RJ. I, hey, that's what people are here for. They don't want over analyzation of these things. Is it good or no? Yes, no. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes, no. sometimes it's not even that clear. Uh, what if I just said this? Well, it's made sounds. 
After the break, mm-hmm. how would you like to die this week, RJ? This week, from a slap or a tick grab. Well, you can't die from either of those, so you got to get grenaded. Um, yeah. Just kind of a sh- shot to the chest. Or, or guillotined. Guillotined, yeah. Grenaded. Cool. Cool. 